Yo, what's happening guys? Welcome to your 20th AngularJS tutorial and in this video we're going to talk about animations. <laughs> okay then dudes, so this is our application and yeah it's pretty cool, it's got some nice functionality attached to it such as adding new ninjas, deleting them, we've got a couple of views there, but uh, it's lacking some kind of slickness, there's no animations between any kind of states, so for example when we go to a new view, it just kind of goes pop, and there's the new view. There's no animation between the two views. And likewise, when we delete one of these, it just kind of go pop. And when we add one, um, it does the same kind of thing. It just kind of pops into existence. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this application to the next level of awesomeness, and we're going to use ng animate to install some kind of animation effects into this project. Now, the animation effects don't come as standard with the Angular Core library, so we're going to have to download a separate module, a separate file, and then load that into our application directly in order to use it. So, what you want to do is head over to the AngularJS website right there, then click this top button right there, Download AngularJS, and uh, you want to go to this Browse Additional Modules link, and that's going to come up with all the different external modules we can load in. So we've already done this for Angular Route in the past. Now we're going to do it with Angular Animate. So you want to right-click this one right here, angularanimate.min.js, and just save that as, and then save it in your library folder right here. Now you can see I've already done that, angularanimate.min.js. It's right there. Then in the index.html file, I've linked up to that file, right there you can see under angular routes i've got angular animate.min.js okay cool so there's one more thing we need to do if we're going to use this within our project and that is insert this uh, animate module as a dependency in our project so the way we do that is by going to our module right here remember this module holds all of our project code so we need to insert the dependency into this module much like we did with ng routes so let's go ahead and put a comma and then add a new dependency, and this one is called ng animate. Save that. And then now we can use all of this cool functionality within our project. So, what does ng animate do for us? Well, at its most basic level, it gives us some classes to play around with so that we can control the animations of elements as they enter and leave our application. For example, we could control uh, the enter and leave states of these ninjas. So when they leave, when we click this cross, we can control the animations because it gives us classes when those elements leave to do that. Okay. Likewise, when they enter by us adding something here, we can also animate views when we go to a different view like that. Okay. So to explain this, um, I want to go through an example. So I'm going to go here to the Angular documentation. And this is just the ng animate module it's going to talk about. I'm going to leave this link down below because this is a really good kind of in-depth documentation about it. And it's got some cool examples also. Uh, and I'm going to scroll down to this bit, CSS-based animations. Now, right here, it gives us the classes that we can use. So these are the classes for elements entering our application. Let's control the animation there. And these are the classes for elements leaving the application. So right now, I'm just going to grab these ones and I'm going to copy them. And I will explain this as I go along. Now I'm going to the styles.css right there. And right at the bottom, I've got this separate comment right there for animations where we're going to dump all, uh, all of our animation CSS. Okay. So to explain these classes, I've done a little diagram. right? And uh, basically, you see right here, ignore this fade uh, class for now, by the way. But uh, we have these classes right here, ng enter. And then down here we have ng enter dot ng enter active, right? So just going to the diagram, when an element first enters our application, we have an animation start point when it first starts to enter, and then an animation end point when it's finished entering, okay? So the animation takes place between here. So at the start point, when we first click, for example, add new ninja, that's the start point of the animation. And we're given this class ng enter, okay? So at the start, when it first starts to enter the application, that element has this class. Then as it animates, it goes through the animations, and when it reaches the end of the animation, it has this ng enter active class as well, as well as this ng active class. So it has both of them at the end point right there, okay? So now we've got these two classes, we can control the animation from one state to the next, okay? And the way we do that is by using these things right here. First of all, this transition effect in CSS. 
Uh, and basically this is just saying, look, okay, for all of the different types of transitions, whether that's opacity or the position on a page or whatever we use, it's gonna take 0 0.5 seconds to do the whole of the animation. And that's 0 uh, 0.5 seconds to get from here, the start point, to the end point, okay? It's gonna be a linear animation and it's gonna affect all different types of animations. Like I said, whether that's for opacity or the position on a page or whatever you want it to be, okay? Then we're saying, okay, well, this is the class we get at the start of the animation. So at that point, I want the opacity to be zero. So for example, when we first add a ninja, I want the opacity of that new ninja when it first comes onto the page to be zero, right? Then at the end of that animation, this class is applied. So at that point, I want the opacity of that ninja to be one second. So after 0 0.5 seconds, I want the opacity, to, uh, the opacity to be one, all right? So that's what it does. It starts at zero at this point, then it reaches the end point right here and goes from zero to one in this time, all right? Now this dot fade is just a class that we don't have in our application, so we can get rid of that. And by the way, we add both classes there just for uh, a more specific rule, so it overrides this one. If it was just this one, which we could do, but uh, it might not override it depending on where we have it in the CSS. So it's good just to keep them both in. So if we go to our index.html, what I'm going to do is animate the view so that when we go to one view to the next, then it kind of fades the view in rather than just going pop and appears. So you can see right here, this main tag has the ng view directive. This is where the views are being loaded in. So this is the element that we want to animate every time we load in a new view. So to do that, all we need to do is come down here and we need to go, oops, we need to go main.ng enter, okay? And that's gonna give that main tag all these properties when it first starts to enter. For example, when we load in a new view. Then down here we want main.ng enter .ng enter active. This is the end point of the animation. So by the time it's finished animating, we want it to have an opacity of one. So it's fading in from zero opacity to one, okay? So let's save that now and just try switching between the different views. So now we've got that cool little fade effect right there, okay? Much better than just popping in. So that's pretty cool. So let's take this one step further and let's add in some animations to these things right here. So when we add in a new ninja, instead of it just popping there, I want it to do something a little more slick, all right? So to do that, we need to target these things, these li tags. So let's find them in the code. They're in the directory.html view and they're right here. So what I'll do is I'll put an ID on this UL right here called ninja-list and then we'll use that in the CSS to grab these li tags. So let's go back to the styles.css and down here, let's say ninja-list, then li because we want the li tags within it dot ng enter. So when we first add a new li tag here, i.e. when we add a new ninja, these are the properties we want to apply to it, okay? And first of all, I'm gonna say transition, much like we did with this one above, and we'll have the transition time to be not point 0.5 seconds. We'll call it linear. That can be ease, by the way, if you prefer, and all again as well, okay? In fact, now what I'm going to do for this one is give it a 0 0.2 transition. Just make it a little bit quicker. All right, so the next thing we want to do is say it has an opacity of zero to begin with. So it's not going to be visible when we first start to fade it in. All right, then I'm going to go down here. I'm going to copy this. I'm going to paste it down here, and then I'm going to add in the extra class that we need, which is ng-enter hyphen active. So that's when it's finished the animation. That's the end point of the animation. And this time we want the opacity to be one like that. We can get rid of this because it's already defined on that element right here. So let's save that. And now if we add in a new ninja, let's call him Leo, give him um, a red belt and then a rate of 25. Now just watch the animation fades in. It looks a little bit better, but I'm still not happy with it. I want to do something else. Okay. So I'm also going to use the transform property, oh, not on that one, on this one, transform, and I'm gonna give it a translate value on the Y axis of 30 pixels. And basically what that means is, 
to begin with, when it first starts, I want it to be, you know, further down by 30 pixels, okay, than it should normally be. And then what we're going to do is we're going to bring it up as it fades in. So we'll come down here and we'll say transform, and then it's translate y, and then it's going to be zero. So it's going to be in the right position when it ends. So let's save that now. And this time we'll add in another one. We'll call him Orion, and then it can be a blue belt, and it can be 25. Now check this. Add to list. It kind of zooms up a little bit. It starts from just below, 30 pixels below, then it brings it back up to zero as well as fading in. That's because of this thing right here, the opacity and the translate. Okay? Pretty cool, yeah? So that's for adding new ninjas, but still when we delete them, they just kind of go poof off the screen. Now, I want to make that a little bit better too. So we can add in the ng leave classes. So as well as the enter classes, we have the ng leave ones, and that controls the animation for elements leaving. So let's just copy these for now, like that, and paste them down here. And wherever you see enter, we'll do leave instead. So ng enter there, and there, and finally there. Okay, cool. So this time, when it leaves, to begin the animation, before it fully leaves, we want it to have an opacity of 1, because it's just began the, opacity, uh, the animation, right? And then we want to fade it out from 1, to zero when it finishes the animation. Cool. Now, I don't want to use this translate Y thing any, uh, anymore. I don't want it to go down or up even. Um, I want to translate it X so it kind of sweeps off to the left. So let's do that. We'll say translate X. And to begin with, it's going to have no kind of transformation, no translation. And then at the end, we'll do minus 100%. So it's going to go right off the page to the left. Okay. So let's do that and click save and hopefully now when we delete a ninja oops uh, I've done it the wrong way this should be X save that now when we delete a ninja swipes off the page like that okay pretty cool yeah and if we refresh we'll get all those ninjas back the reason it doesn't go beyond this thing here is because if I search for the content class you can see right here, I've given an overflow of hidden. So this gray box has a class of content and it's got an overflow of hidden. That's why when it reaches the edge here, it's disappearing, which is cool. If I got rid of that, save that and click off. Now you can see they go right off the page, but it doesn't look quite as cool. It doesn't look quite right. So I had, uh, I added in this class or this property right here, this overflow hidden. And now when they reach the end of the box, they hide. So pretty cool, yeah? So that is the animation in Angular. Um, I am going to go into more detail and do some more cool things in the next tutorial. This is just part one, so make sure you watch that as well. Uh, but yeah, that's kind of like the basics, if you like. Just makes our application look a bit cooler. So uh, have a try yourself, uh, play around with those classes and see what you can do. And I'll see you in the very next tutorial.